Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's call across the globe. Today, we also celebrate our official anniversary and the birthday of one of our founders, Marie Fielder. Moments like these bring to mind a collection of stories from our 50 year history. Our own scholarly research consistently reveals that stories have a profound impact on how we think about our own lives and how we relate to each other. Stories provide a way for us to make sense of the world while also developing empathy and compassion for other people. They are essential to what it means to become more fully human. Stories help us to relate to one another on deeper levels, influence our well being, and allow us to chronicle our individual and collective histories. We seek to describe, educate, and illuminate through narratives so we can discover meaning, accountability, and understanding. Some of our scholar practitioners at Fielding focus their research efforts on storytelling effects. Our psychology and organizational leadership graduates have focused on how Black women cope when experiencing gendered racism at work, dominant narratives in art and digital feminist activism, benefits of storytelling in aging populations, using narratives in organizational life, our indigenous people's storytelling, and its ties to ecological justice and character, just to name a few. Each of us on the call today has our own unique building story to tell. It could be a variation of Fielding's origin story, where Fielding means a group of innovative adult learners ready to, make, to take on the world, to one that is more related to professional advancement and personal growth. Our president had a very wonderful story that she wanted to share, and so I'll share it on her behalf. When uh, she came to Fielding, she was introduced by many faculty colleagues as a hermeneuticist. In her previous affiliations with other institutions, no one cared to value what she did as a qualitative thinker. But here at Fielding, she felt valued. In addition to this event celebrating our 50th anniversary, we are excited to announce that we are also hosting an all-day giving day today. Throughout today, there will be giveaways and opportunities to interact with one another. You can view the chat to find out how to participate. We encourage you to give today. In the spirit of the mission and values we have stood for since 1974, due to the generosity of trustee Dr. John Bennett, each contribution you make today will be matched dollar for dollar up to $2,000. Our university leadership team will also contribute with a $1,000 match. This means that every gift you give is matched twice. Thank you, Dr. Bennett and the university leadership team for your support. Today's contributions will contribute to impact our students, alums, faculty, and many others in our Fielding community. Thank you for giving to Fielding. Today in the first half hour, we will hear from two guest speakers who submitted their stories this past month. During the second half, we will separate into breakout groups where you will be in conversation with some of our beloved faculty at Murata. We will convene for a few closing words to round out this hour together. Now, I would like to turn it over to our Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. Allison Davis Wideyes, for the Global Land Acknowledgement. Thank you, Provost Williams, and welcome everyone to Fielding's 50th Call Across the Globe. I would like for you to join us in the land acknowledgement. And if you are in a place where you happen to know the indigenous lands upon which you reside, please drop it in the chat. If not, we have dropped in nativeland.ca, which is a great tool for finding indigenous lands all over the world. So please join us. Fielding Graduate University affirms and honors our commitment to indigenous communities as the original stewards of the lands that we all inhabit. As a graduate learning community founded on the values of social and ecological justice, we recognize the deep history, critical sovereignty, expansive scholarship, and ecological knowledge of indigenous nations around the world. We honor their elders, both past and present, as well as their future generations of emerging leaders. As a global distributed learning institution, Fielding Graduate University avows the following. We commit ourselves to promoting educational opportunities in partnership with Indigenous peoples worldwide who are interested in advancing educational and professional opportunities in Fielding's areas of expertise. We commit ourselves to consulting and cooperating in good faith with Indigenous peoples through their own representative institutions, 
in order to provide opportunities for knowledge production or any other project affecting their lands, territories, or knowledge resources. We commit ourselves to promoting and protecting the rights of Indigenous peoples by actively promoting the scholarship of Indigenous communities through Fielding University Press to advance knowledge and provide venues for knowledge production and dissemination. We recognize and acknowledge that traditional knowledge cannot be separated from natural and cultural resources. And as such, all Indigenous knowledge should be protected and respected. By centering Indigenous communities, their traditions, their worldviews, their knowledge, we are working in partnership in order to enhance the next generation of world Indigenous leadership committed to building a more just and sustainable world. Thank you all. And now I'll turn our uh, venue over to Kaylin Staten. Thank you, Dr. Davis White Eyes. And again, thank you to each of you for being here with us today on this momentous occasion for Fielding Graduate University. For this year's call across the globe, we hosted a contest on social media and in other communications channels to gather stories from our community. We received so many uplifting stories and stay tuned for more of them during the rest of our 50th anniversary year. Unfortunately, we can't hear all of them today in our hour that we have together, but we'll have them in different capacities throughout the year. Today, I have the pleasure to introduce you to two speakers who will share how Fielding has transformed their lives and their work throughout the years. Our first speaker is Tessa Leon, a current doctoral student in the Leadership for Change program. She has over 25 years of experience teaching mathematics, mathematical thinking, and problem solving. She has used her degrees in mathematics, statistics, and counseling to teach struggling students across the K-16 spectrum. Her recent work has focused on adult foundational learning. She began at Fielding's EDD program because of the lack of resources and adults learning foundational mathematics. She expects to be finished with her EDD at the end of 2024. Her dissertation will study how adults learn and make sense of mathematics and their numeracy practices using sociocultural discourse analysis. This mixed method study will investigate the link between mathematics, mathematical thinking, and numeracy in an adult foundational mathematics class. Now we'll hand it over to Tessa to share her story with us this morning. Thank you, Tessa, for being here. So this is my journey on how I got to fielding. I was always trying to find my way. I was always being told that I couldn't do math the way I did it, that I didn't know how to write. And then when I became a teacher, I was told I was always teaching math wrong. And so I decided to try and figure out how to keep doing what I knew worked. And I took the inspiration from Bruce Lee, who said to be like water, because water gets around obstacles and keeps going. But I found that if you go, if you're too much like water, you're taking somebody else's path. And you're still narrowly focused on what is possible. And so I found that wasn't my path. And I decided that I would pick my own destination instead of following other people. And because of my years of teaching, I wanted to help more adults learn mathematics. Because knowing mathematics opens up a lot of doors for people. But while I was trying to do that, I ended up with um, stage three cancer. And it was a very rare form of cancer. It turned into stage four. So I had a lot of time to think and to talk to people I trusted and just stop. And one of the people I talked to was Dr. Heather Bruce, who's an alumni of Fielding. and she encouraged me to go to fielding. And this is my dog who was one of the joys of my life at the time. So I hope everybody knows how happy I was to have that company. I had nowhere to go. I had to stop. And my dog helped me through this. And so I 
one of the things I did at that time was really refocus what my destination was. And that was going to grad school and getting my doctorate. And Heather said, go to fielding, you'll love it. And what I wanted to do was create a mathematics curriculum that I knew worked for people, adults, that was not based on tr primary and secondary materials, was trauma-informed and in based on adult learning theory. And so what I did is I had to take a big risk and I jumped into grad school. It was very scary for me, but my net appeared in the form of my professors. I had so many professors who encouraged me to do, to keep going and thinking and stretching how much I thought that I didn't have to do things the way everybody else did it. They just encouraged me to do better and better and better. And so on the very first day of class, we did vision boards with Dr. Jenny Edwards. And this is my vision board. And first I wanted to get rid of my cans because those were somebody else's monkey. I have ganache because ganache is the breaker of down of obstacles. I wanted to open the box and find out whether what was happening with Schrodinger's cat, if you know about quantum mechanics. And I have the flaming chalice there because that is internally seeking knowledge. And what I wanted to do was create a paradigm shift in how adults are taught mathematics. And what I found is the paradigm shift was also within me because of my professors. And so now I feel like I am the one who's soaring, thanks to all of the professors I've had, Dr. Fowler, Dr. Haskey, Dr. Edwards, Jenny is on my committee, Dr. Nicholas Smith is my chair, and Lineal and Barbara Mink and Ed Leach and Four Arrows. And Malcolm North is my third faculty person. And my dissertation is going to look at how adults learn. And it's gonna based on numeracy because this is actually a bigger problem than I thought it was. Between 35 and 90% of all adults in the world, depending on the country, have low numeracy skills. And numeracy is so connected to human well being. And so I'm, but there's no real research into this field. And so hopefully I will start the research. And so thanks to my professors, I feel like I am ready to move on and ready to finish my dream by the end of the year and to become a leader for change. Thank you. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you, Tessa, for sharing your story with us. If you have any questions or comments for Tessa, you can feel free to put those into the chat and continue to share your own stories throughout today's program as well. And so now I have also the pleasure to introduce our second speaker, Dr. Maria Ritter, who is a clinical psychology alum. Dr. Maria Ritter is a retired clinical psychologist and psychoanalyst and the author of five books, most recently returned to Zeipzig in 2022, a follow-up to 2024's Return to Dresden. She has extensively written on trauma and recovery and has used memory, storytelling, and poetry to invite her readers into a world of peace. After retiring from her practice in California, she now lives in Austin, Texas. Dr. Ritter is a graduate of the University of Heidelberg, Germany, and Fielding Graduate University. She also is a graduate and a faculty member of the San Diego Psychoanalytic Center. Dr. Ritter, thank you for also being here this morning, and I'll hand over the mic to you now. Dr. Rogers, Kaylin, colleagues and guests, 
My heartfelt congratulations on the 50th anniversary of Fielding Graduate University with adult learning, professional growth, compassion, diversity, and social action. I'm glad to celebrate with you and thank you so much for inviting me. I'm old. Fielding is the beginning of a life journey. My journey started in 1976 at the Fielding Institute in Santa Barbara, and I'm so grateful and lucky for my experience. I first met Dr. Frederick Hudson in Phoenix, Arizona, and you can see him here on the picture, when he invited me to enroll in a PhD clinical psychology program. What did he see in me, I wondered. I would be wanted there? How did he know me? He told me about the Fielding Institute, a graduate program for adults with a cutting edge of social sciences in clinical psychology, education, and research within a flexible adult learning environment. As a German immigrant with a diploma in psychology from the University of Heidelberg in 1966, I wanted to find a place to fit into the traditional American graduate level education with acceptance of my past professional qualification and my need for flexibility in learning locations. My husband, a minister, had an active parish in Los Angeles and my role was to be the minister's wife and care for our two children. I had worked part-time at a child guidance center. One of the founding members of Fielding, Dr. Renata Tesch from Germany, understood my degree and my past experiences. By enrolling into Fielding, I could catch up on more recent psychological theories and practice development. I was accepted and now belong to a caring academic community. As an immigrant in, from Germany in 1966, at the age of 24, and with an accent, I quickly discovered that I came with a heavy burden of being identified as a child of the Nazis. It stirred bitterness in many people I met. I listened to painful memories of their family members who had been killed by the Nazis, or when they shared with me their severe trauma from war and Holocaust. On my part, years of collective guilt for the sin of our fathers had led to shame, fear, blame, and withdrawal. We received what we deserved, my grandfather said in 1945, after the war was over and I believed him. His stare out the window spoke of bitterness and solemn resignation in the face of God's punishment for us all. He meant famine, our poverty, our illnesses, our homelessness, our hate and silence. Instead of revisiting my old German learning environment from school, of teachers marking mistakes with a red pen, receiving poor grades or a swat on my hands, criticism in front of the class and fear of failing my classes. In stark contrast, the fielding learning process provided a welcoming new world of affirmation, respect with listening and sharing. Here are some examples, staff and teachers such as Frederick Hudson, Jackie Seelbach, Rodney Davis, Paul Soderberg, just to name a few, saw potential in me and not the child of a Nazi. I experienced a welcoming and accepting learning setting with small groups and interactions. We met about twice a year for study meetings in Santa Barbara at the Casa to focus on learning new material and sharing joint experiences Sometimes family members were invited. I met on a regular basis for one-to-one -one meeting with my great mentor, Dr. Rodney Davis in the Los Angeles area. 
there were new learn learning experiences provided in groups such as existential and personal exercises to increase body and self-awareness and self-acceptance, hypnosis and body work. I fondly remember Dr. Stan Kaplan and his work with body movements and Dr. Soderbergh's body work to release trauma. I will spare you the details on this. It was exciting. Overall, many supportive approaches to learning and in integrative new academic material I had never experienced, plus confidence building, acceptance, and productive feedback. Favorite motto was, feel free and please ask. I was encouraged to write, express thoughts and reflections, which led toward my research dissertation with the topic of personal and professional interest. I graduated in um, November, 1981, by presenting my dissertation, The Minister's Wife, an exploratory story on role conflict and self-actualization. The role of women was changing on all levels in society, but fielding is a journey with the future. But here, this is how the dissertation looked at this time. <laughs> Given all the help, affirmation, and encouragement I had received from teachers, mentors, and students, I later finished my clinical training in transactional analysis, became a licensed clinical psychologist and psychoanalyst with a private practice in San Diego, California, and to my surprise, an author. My two memoirs, Return to Dresden and Return to Leipzig, have contributed to the many voices of other war survivors. Both books were inducted in 2022 into the Documentation Center for Displacement, Expulsion, and Reconciliation in Berlin, Germany. Very moving experience. My scientific paper, Silence as the Voice of Trauma, published in the American Journal of Psychoanalysts, has integrated my own voice into clinical material, lifting heavy layers of guilt and fear from the past in my own psychoanalytic treatment has freed my playful imagination to even write poetry, short stories, fairy tales, and children's story. Currently, I'm working on Siggy the Brave Dachshund. Dachshund is my dog, and Siggy is named after Sigmund or Sigmund Freud. Maybe my writing is a welcome retreat to a much happier childhood. In closing, I will be forever grateful to Fielding for the learning process, for encouraging my personal growth and the deep human acceptance there by faculty and peers. Congratulations and all my best for the next 50 years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ritter, for sharing your inspirational story with us. And I've seen a lot of commentary and engagement in the chat of just for you and Tessa. So thank you both for being available and agreeing to speak today and sharing all of your, your fielding memories and well wishes for our anniversary as well this morning. And thank you to everyone, of course, for adding your, your comments in the chat as we, we continue to celebrate our 50th anniversary this year. Now we'll segue into our breakout sessions. You'll be able to choose which of the four rooms you'd like to go to based on the rooms on the screen and the faculty emirati emirat and other representatives on the screen. I wish to extend our gratitude to the faculty emirati and other honorary members with us today. So in room number one, we have Anna DiStefano, EDD, and Lynn Lucko, PhD. In room number two, we have Marcella Benson, Cuisina, faculty emeriti, and in room number three, we have David Rayerich, at Peace PhD, and then in room number four, we have Jean-Pierre Isbout's D-Lit. So you'll be able to choose which room you would like to go to, and it's just a conversation 
with these these representatives and our beloved members of our community who have a lot of different stories that they could tell and then you can also ask them questions and i'm sure that they'll ask you questions as well so without further ado we'll go into the breakout rooms and then we'll reconvene with about five minutes left to the top of the hour for some closing remarks but again thank you for attending today and enjoy the conversations in the breakout rooms I, I know that the conversations you had during the breakout rooms were very fruitful, full of memories, both about our scholarly pursuits and friendships along the way. So thank you for being here today and engaging in those conversations. And thank you to our faculty, Emeritai, again, and other representatives and everybody in the breakout rooms for hosting the conversations today as well. We would certainly appreciate it. Without each of you on this call, there wouldn't be a fielding. Each of you brings a fervor and perspective that allows us to be better together. We hope to see you at continued 50th anniversary events this year. And please join us because we have, of course, it's Giving Day today, and we have a very special event with Dr. Judy Stevens Long on Facebook Live at 1 p.m. PT, 4, p 4 p.m. ET. So remember to mark your calendars for that. And you can also watch the replay after the fact as well. But we would love to have you on that Facebook Live today on Giving Day. Remember to give today and contribute to fielding in that capacity. And just without further ado, just take care today on our official 50th anniversary day and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again for being here.